Hey friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com. Now today we're gonna talk about how to cut the mud out of your tracks in your session. Again, we all want clarity, we want our mixes to not be muddy, and there's a particular frequency range where the mud tends to live in most tracks, and that's 300 hertz to 600 hertz. Anytime that we're talking about a muddy track or a track that has too much room tone or a track that kind of sounds like cardboard, that's the frequency range you wanna dig into. Now we do have to be judicious. We don't wanna just go willy nilly and take 20 decibels off of every track in that frequency range because there'll be a huge dip in that 300 to 600 hertz range and that's not good. But for most tracks, we can do just a tiny bit of cleanup, you know, one to three decibels of cuts, just kind of removing the mud, cleaning the windshield so we can see through the window and I want to show you exactly how to do that today. So let's just start with the drums. Let's solo these drums and just take a listen to what we have. We know that there's plenty of low end activity, that kick is very present, but there's just kind of like this muddy thing about the drums. Let's see what we can do with the channel EQ. So I'm going to introduce a filter. I'm gonna hold option and click on the Q area here to set it to 0.60. I'm gonna boost it by a good amount, maybe nine decibels. And I'm gonna go searching in that 300 to 600 Hertz region to see if I can find where that mud lives so I can tame it, I can remove some of it. Do you hear that? The snare and everything else kind of comes more into focus when I cut that 500 hertz region by a couple decibels. There's a little less of that cardboard sound. Let's hear it again. Okay, I'm feeling that. Let's now check out the bass guitar. Now you can see I'm boosting the signal first. You know, I'm setting a slightly narrow filter, but not too narrow. And then I'm going to find that ugly frequency that I don't like so I can remove it. For me, there's kind of like a nasally quality to the bass guitar that I wanna remove at 400 Hertz. Now, typically I would not work in solo like this. Usually I would have the drums and the bass playing at the same time. You know, at least one other instrument to help give me context as I'm making these EQ adjustments. But for the sake of being able to illustrate this, I've soloed the bass. Now you can see also that I'm working in a methodical manner. You know, I'm not just like bending and stretching everything super quickly. I'm not grabbing a filter and dragging it all over the place like that. Instead, I'm dredging up the decibels. I have a slightly narrow filter. I go find the frequency I wanna remove or in other cases want to add, and then I adjust to about negative one to negative three, plus one and plus three, and then I adjust the width or the Q of the filter. I adjust each parameter in sequence, not at the same time. Okay, let's now check out the guitars.
okay, about 550 hertz. There's kind of like this sound of the guitars where almost like if you put your hands in front of your mouth, like, you know, it's not an attractive sound. So I removed it by a negative two and I'm not doing huge boosts or cuts, you know, I'm just taking a couple decibels off. That's all it takes, especially as we continue through the series, we're going to add EQs. So we want to be judicious. We want to be thoughtful and not be too aggressive because all these EQ adjustments are going to make a big difference when we start stacking them. Okay, so let's now move on to our vocals. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. I never knew what you went through Maybe I just couldn't see Maybe it's pride or the raw truth Maybe it's vulnerability Now to my ears, there's a lot of mud going on in these vocals. So I'm using a low shelf instead of just a parametric band to boost because I'm planning to make a pretty big adjustment to these vocals. Again, I'm not going to go much beyond, you know, one to three decibels, but I want to start pushing these vocals closer to the high end instead of the low end. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. Okay, so with the vocals, we're shaping a bit more. Let's now check out all of these instruments together, and we'll turn off and turn on the different EQs. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. I never knew what you were. I just couldn't see Maybe it's pride or the rock too Maybe it's vulnerability So to my ears, I think we're making a pretty big difference on this track. We're starting to make adjustments that are pushing the different elements of our tracks towards more of the low and the high end. Aside from the kick and the bass, most instruments live in the mid range of our mix. So there tends to be a disproportionate amount of mid range in most Logic projects. So we're using our channel EQ to kind of scrape out that mid range mud. So the low end and the high end is represented more accurately in our mixes. Now tomorrow we're gonna dig into more general tonal shaping using one specific EQ in Logic. See you then.